Hi, I'm Scott. Welcome to my channel, Awesome Thought. In this intro video, I'd like to talk to you about what awesome means and why it might be interesting to you and what I'd like to do with this channel. So what does this word, this acronym awesome mean? Well, how many of these words describe you? Agnostic or atheist? Worldly? Existential? Scientific or statistical? Objective? Moderate or educated. If you answered yes to more than half these words, then by God, you are awesome. These words are almost the exact opposite of what we see in public discourse today. YouTube, the news, they tend to be politico religious, nationalist, dogmatic, biased, self centered, sensationalist, and shallow. I figured, let's try something different, even if it's just two people talking to each other on YouTube. The symbol that I've chosen for awesome thought is the purple heart of the normal curve. Now, you may have seen the normal curve in statistics class, so this is an obvious connection to that S for statistics. It's also a very good symbol for M for moderate. And let's talk about that a little bit. What does moderate mean? To me, moderate means striking a good balance between progressive and conservative thought. I think it's totally normal and okay to have progressive and conservative concerns in the same brain. And it's also important for them to be balanced against each other. So they don't, we don't have to talk about progressive people and conservative people. I think that there are progressive and conservative thoughts and ideas which we can hold simultaneously. Now, when we talk about these big emotional buzzwords, we ought to define them carefully. So this is what I mean by these terms. Progressive to me means concerned about present imperfections. Let's face it, life is 90% beautiful, 9% imperfect, and 1% terrible. It's okay to be concerned about present imperfections and try to do something about them. Conservative means concerned about risk and rapid change. Uh, rapid change is especially important in today's world because everything is changing so quickly. Now, unfortunately, some people tend to take one of these sides at the exclusion of the other. And that's how we end up with people on the far left and far right. And let me define these again. To me, the far left represents those who are angry about the present and past, especially unprivileged status, either real or perceived. And on the far right, we have those who are afraid of the future, especially loss of some kind of privilege, real or perceived. So essentially at this point, we have people whose emotions are getting the better of them. But one thing they have in common is that they are far from moderate. So let me also define far, motivated by emotions and party loyalty more than by objective reasoning more interested in domination than compromise. By the way, uh, in America at least, we associate the left or the progressive side with the color blue and the conservative or right side of the spectrum is red. For example, when we talk about red states and blue states. So I have chosen purple as my color of choice because of course, uh, blue and red combined make purple. It's a good, appropriate blend. Now, in my opinion, yeah, it's okay to have some people on the far left and the far right as well. We can't all be the same, uh, but I personally identify much more strongly with the moderate side, and I find it difficult to see that represented, to be honest with you. You would think by looking at this curve, that there's a big, huge purple peak in the middle where, where most of the people are. Uh, and that may or may not be the case, but it doesn't feel like it to me. What public discourse feels like to me is this picture instead. We have a loud, angry left hollering at a fearful, angry right. And those of us who are moderate or awesome are kind of hidden and lost in the middle there, trying to signal for anybody for attention, uh, but it's hard to get that kind of attention or notice when all this clamor is going on. 
when I was looking for graphics for this presentation, I found this one, and I found it really interesting that the left and the right were represented by a man and a woman. Well, this graphic actually was not written, was not prepared for the left and the right, but I thought it very appropriate to use because uh, in my experience, the, the discourse between left and right feels so much to me like a divorcing couple. It feels like two people who just can't stand each other anymore and all they're really interested in anymore is just proving how wrong the other person is. Uh, so maybe you agree with me that public discourse feels a lot that way a lot of the time. Anyway, what, what might we do with this channel? Well, I think that I would like to use YouTube as a forum to discuss awesome principles, awesome commentary, calling out extremism, and adding some perspective. I've tried writing blog posts here and there every once in a while, but I think I've gotten a grand total of zero views on all of them. So uh, I thought maybe, who knows, uh, YouTube might be easier to find things. Maybe I'll get one or two views, and that would be an infinite improvement <laughs> for for my uh, for my philosophy. So let me unfold each one of these a little bit. Awesome principles include things like why be awesome, instinct and transcendence. There's an instinct really, I think, to be emotional and sensationalist and partisan. And reaching the middle, I think, involves a, a having to transcend those instincts. Save your emotions for the specifics. It just doesn't make sense to me when people are so emotional about broad statements and stereotypes. Um, you'll burn yourself out that way. If you feel emotional about something, figure out exactly what it is that you're emotional about. And then maybe you can do something constructive about it instead of just being mad at the world. Critical input and output. Critical thinking. The reason I called it input and output is because I'm thinking about both listening and speaking and reading and writing. All those should be something that we should all be able to do critically. It's more complicated than that. As I pointed out before, public discourse tends to be oversimplified. And when things are oversimplified, again, it's very easy to just get, to just take a side and stake it out and be angry about it um, and refuse to listen to the other side. But it's usually more complicated than that. And when we take a more nuanced approach, we tend to find that it's more constructive. Sharing the world. We must always share the world with people who are different from us. And that includes not only people who look different from us, because that is something that is uh, very well recognized today. We all talk about diversity of skin color, but we don't talk very much about diversity of thought. It's really, really important to, to not be biased and prejudiced against people who are different from us on the inside. We must share the world with them and respect them and not try to like create a world where everybody's like me. Calling out extremism. There are some ideas here like prejudice precipitates pretenses. And, and what I mean by that is basically the uh, talking points that we get in the left and right today are, are are really the result of a long, long string of pretenses. Uh, in other words, people say they're doing some, something for one reason, but that's not really the the reason they're interested in it. Um, these these ideas are based on on prejudice. Um, fallacies of the far left and the far right. It's important to understand how both the far left and the far right are making arguments that really don't make sense. Barking dogma is my term for uh, the, the attitude that people take when you tell them something they don't want to hear, but rather than being able to debate it intelligently, they just get emotionally defensive and just bark, bark, bark. It's terrible of you to say that. And that's how they think they're gonna win an argument. And uh, partisan absurdity. Awesome commentary involves looking for identifying real problems uh, and not just blame games. 
talking about culture wars and how to find peace, looking for solutions to problems that we can identify, fact checking, what are the real true facts at issue? Uh, and also part of the commentary, I think it would be really interesting to do this in small teams. Um, so if you're interested in talking with me about a particular issue, it's really easy to get in touch with me. I'm not rich or famous. Uh, so you can uh, get in touch with me and, and suggest something that we could talk about. It might add a lot to this channel to have other people on it talking our thoughts through. Perspective. It's important to have perspective both historically and geographically, uh, comparatively. So the historic perspective means taking a look at like, why are things this way anyway? How, how, did, how, did, how did we arrive here? Um, comparative perspective means how does the American perspective compare to the Chinese or the Israeli? How does the ur urban perspective compare to the rural? And as a lifelong educator myself, um, I'm always interested in educating both others and myself. I'm not a, a, a world expert at anything, but I know that there are people who know a lot more than me about certain things, and there are people who know less than me about some things. So I have ideas to teach people, and I also have ideas to learn from people. So this channel would be a good opportunity to do that teaching and learning and communicating. So it would be awesome to meet you. I'd like to give you some of my contact information here. Uh, first and foremost, I have written a book. It's a world history from an awesome perspective called How Life Got This Way. The book is completed and it's in post-production right now. I plan to self-publish it on Amazon around August of 2022. In the meantime, it's actually available for free at the website howlifegotthisway.com. So I actually welcome you and encourage you to go to that website and you can read the whole book for free right now. Uh, I have a couple of uh, Facebook groups and pages. So I have a, a, a Facebook group called Awesome Thought, which is for people who relate to this point of view. I have a Twitter profile, which is Scott's Thoughts with one T in Scott and two underscores between the words. Because damn it, the, the usernames with zero and one underscores were already taken even with one T in Scott. Uh, Facebook.com, How Life Got This Way, is a page uh, for my book. And my email address is also on the screen. I'm going to flash a couple of uh, image credits on the next screen, and then I will end with this one uh, in case you'd like to follow up and stay in touch with me. I would look forward to talking to you soon. Bye now.